G'day. It's been a year since I purchased this 2021 Tesla Model 3 and there's a few things I just want to tell you about after having owned the car for a year. I'm not here to bag Tesla, this is a fantastic car, I really love it. But there are a few things after owning the car for a while that I just think you should know about. I want to talk about entry methods using the card or a key fob or the phone app. Also I want to talk to you about accessories like the centre console, and what do you do if you get a puncture? There's no spare tyre. We've got to talk about the smart summons and full self-driving here in Australia. Yeah, it really freaks out. We should be talking about connectivity, so a premium subscription for over-the-air updates. And what about using a hotspot on your phone or Wi-Fi in your garage? Let's also talk about uh, charging, charging at home, charging while you're on a trip, using the superchargers and also third party chargers. And I also want to have a chat to you about the games controller. I'm going to do all of these things and more right after you press that subscribe button. So let's get started. Your Tesla comes with a card that enables you to enter the car by putting the card up against the window pillar and it will unlock it and when you finish driving, you put it back against the window pillar and it will lock the car up as you walk away. Now this is pretty handy, except that you are going to be carrying a pile of keys for your house, for your garage, and there's no simple way of putting or connecting that card to the key ring. So another option is to use the app on your phone. This is pretty convenient because you always carry your phone and you can open the car, you can open the trunk in the front from there, but it's a bit of a nuisance when you're carrying groceries is you have to get it out of your pocket. So a better option i found is the Tesla key fob. This little gadget is on all the time and enables you to open and close the trunk in the front to lock the car and also when it's in your pocket you simply just walk up to the car and the car senses you approaching, automatically unlocks, and you can hop in and drive away. So that's just really convenient. So that's the option I use most of the time, the Tesla key fob. It is a $300 accessory though, so thank you Tesla. I wanted to mention the centre console. When you purchase a Tesla Model 3, it comes with these large buckets in the centre console at the front, and equally at the rear. Now that's fantastic for storing all sorts of items. However, it doesn't include anything in the way of shelves. So for an additional $30, you can purchase these accessories that slide straight into the center console, just as if they were manufactured at the factory. And that's what bugs me, is for $30, Tesla should just include these. These are very expensive motor vehicles, and you don't expect to have to kick in an extra $30 just to make them fully functional. That's my gripe. So how do you repair a flat tyre? There is no spare and I really hope you don't discover this on a pouring wet day where you have to do this for the first time. So for an additional $145 Tesla will sell you this accessory. Now this is a combination of a pneumatic tyre pump as well as a solution bottle that includes material for sealing up any hole in your tyre. It comes with instructions and I really recommend you read this well before you need it. So you unpack the whole thing, there's a long extension cord for a 12 volt supply and then there are two different connectors. One is the black and that dispenses the solution to seal the tyre. Obviously you first remove a nail or screw that's caused the puncture and then you use the transparent hose to reinflate the tyre. So this should get you back on the road. You plug it in using the 12 volt outlet that is in the rear of the centre console. It's a little bit of a hidden outlet, you have to look for it, but you just connect the 12 volt supply and then you can turn on the electric pump to inflate your tyre. And you can select, firstly you turn it on, you dispense the liquid. Once that's sealed, you can then reinflate the tyre, either from completely flat or just top it up if it needs a few psi. And I just store mine in the trunk of the vehicle down the side. Smart summons feature comes with the full self-drive 
software suite. And some people might say it's a gimmick. I think it's got a potential that could be really extraordinary because at the moment it will do things like come to you from a spot in the car park, which is fun to show your friends. What I had really, really hoped for though is that it would be able to navigate a complex car park in the pouring rain like at Woolworths when you're getting your groceries and work its way around the car park completely unattended to come and pick you up so you didn't get wet. We're not quite there yet though. The software is going to need a few more iterations before we can achieve this. The other thing I'm doing right now is I'm just going out to a couple of locations where I've used the full self-drive software that came with this car and it came with the factory installed FSD software which I think is probably what they call version 8. Now despite the fact that I've spent $10,000 on that option it doesn't automatically mean that I become a beta software tester but it does mean that when the production product is ready or the, the beta product is ready for public release then I would get that software. But what I am trying to find out is um, what software will handle a couple of cases I've encountered one in particular where you're going over the crest of a hill and the software in the car can't decide if it has to go left, right or straight ahead so it hands control back to the driver. It's a two lane, one in each direction road with very clear lane marking so I know the car can handle this, I've done this before. I'm just going to come around this corner and put it into self-drive mode. There it is, we're doing 50 kilometres an hour. I'm going to back it off a little bit to 45. We're going around a corner and this crest of the hill has been a challenge for the car in the past. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it really freaks out. It got through it that time. Tesla's premium subscription service means that the car is always connected. You always have the latest Google Maps and GPS updates as well as the ability to stream music and podcasts and when you stop you can watch Netflix and YouTube. You also have the ability to connect to services like TuneIn and Spotify where you've got your favorite music, your playlists and your favorite podcasts. The kids like to get onto what they call karaoke which gives them the ability to listen to some music while having the lyrics displayed on the screen so the kids can sing along while you drive. Premium connectivity costs $10 a month in Australia. When there is a software update, you can download that by connecting the car to your hotspot on your phone and then using that as a Wi-Fi hotspot to download the software. And this will stay connected while you drive. So you can be downloading software updates while you're driving along and then once you've stopped you can load that update which takes about 20 minutes. The LFP batteries that come with my Tesla enable me to charge the car to 100% and leave it there most of the time. So I do about 100 k's a day running around town and occasionally we do some long 2000 km trips. But at home I simply just plug the car in at the end of each day and leave it on trickle charge. I have solar panels on the roof and that charges quite adequately for the sort of driving I'm doing. Level 1 charging is about 7 to 10 kilometers per hour so it does take a while to charge the battery if it's deeply discharged. One of the issues I have found however is there are so many apps that are required to be reviewed when you do a long trip because there is not a single app that at the moment shows all of the charges that are available. Destination charges charge it up to 50 kilometers per hour and these are available in most towns but really the faster charges are the ones that are preferable. In Australia the National Roads and Motorists Association, the NRMA, have installed fast chargers in many parts of the country and at the moment they don't charge any fee for the use of these. So when I'm travelling around Australia what I am looking for are NRMA chargers as my first preference. This is the Goulburn supercharger facility. We really only need about half an hour here just to top up to get us back home. 
When I purchased the Tesla, I decided to get the white seats. I don't know what possessed me to do that at the time because I often use this car for industrial purposes, carrying sprays and tools and things. However, after a year, I found that I've been able to keep them clean just simply using baby water wipes. These little wonders remove just about every stain and they don't leave any residue behind because they really are just water. The trunk in the Tesla 3 is really cavernous, which is great for me because I carry tools and equipment around with me. And in the bottom of the trunk, there's another hidden compartment where you can store other materials as well. So to protect it, I purchased the Tesla accessory rubber mat. And this industrial grade product just slips into the back of the trunk and protects it from damage. Getting a compatible games controller for the Tesla has proven to be a bit of a challenge. I purchased a PlayStation DualShock and I'm using it as a wired connector and it does work with some of the games but not all of the games. I do find that frustrating. Sonic the Hedgehog in particular just won't respond to the games controller. It doesn't recognise that it's there. Really? You did a bad? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a problem I'm still working on. In the meantime, the kids are still enjoying using the games provided on the Tesla and many of them are just touch screens or in the case of beach buggy racing, you use the steering wheel to control the game. One last thing Tesla, how about a wiper for the rear window? The demister just doesn't do it. So would I buy another Tesla Model 3? Hell yeah, this is a fantastic car. Although I do want a Cybertruck, but here in Australia it's a three or four year wait to get one of those things. So if you decide to go ahead and buy a Tesla, you're not gonna regret it. They're a great car. Thanks for watching.